I'm, we are living in a globalized economy, we like it or not. And probably the, the latest trade wars are pushing back this phenomenon. But it is fully embedded already in our economy. We don't see any more globalization, sorry for my French accent, <laughs> as a way of doing business or running a um, financial industry. We are looking at it as a process. And what is the process of globalization? It's the process of connecting and integrating between people, companies, and governments. That's why it's so difficult to, come, to push that back. Now, what is our view around the Internet of Value? In a, in a nutshell, Internet of Value for Ripple is moving money as you move information today. And many people are disillusioned about the globalization. And why? There are a series of components that need to interoperate together in order to get to this certain level. If you think about a fire, you need three elements and if one of them is missing, you will have only smoke. And I think in the, in the world that we are living today, these three elements around the globalization is one of them is around goods. And there has been disruption since decennies in order to get to this level of uh, efficiency. Imagine about the pre-container world. The trade was zero almost. After the, the uh, introduction of the kind container, this was a big revolution. The trade percentage increased to multiples of hundreds. The same happened with internet. The day that we started, I think early 90s, it was very important in which network are you. Are you thinking today which network, network are you using in order to send your uh, emails? No. Because the, 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 the real disruption is creating the interoperability between different networks. When you think about money, money and the process of the cross-border, which is the end leg of any financial transaction, is still handled based on the process going back to medicines. And this has, hasn't changed. If you are a banker, you know that. Cross-border payment is a sequence of liabilities between the parties involved in the transaction. And nobody has changed it. It is decentralized fully because there is no central bank dealing with that. So you have a very complex uh, process which is called correspondent banking, which is enabling the move of money from one part of the world to the other. There are a series of structural issues behind this. If you are sending cross-border today, you don't know what is the amount that will get to the destination. And I can tell you, even for a small um, uh, ticket size, like 50 euros, big part of it is, is actually absorbed by multiple intermediaries in the chain. In other words, today, if you are part of the financial industry and you are dealing with cross-border, you have to tap, trap capitals in the destination countries. So that means that you pre-fund accounts. Banks, they do that for you, and this has a cost to the economy. As an individual, as a financial player, as any part of this chain, we are paying for this. And imagine if you are part of the unbanked world and you are sending money cross-border. If you are a remitter, and this is not around luxury, this is around really a, a, an important part of the life of the people, helping the families. And I can tell you, even in this part, is even worse. You pay a percentage of the amount that you are, you are sending to your families. The breakthrough of the blockchain started a few years ago. But blockchain has its own limitation. If you want to really interoperate the world, blockchain is a network on its own. It does not have the capacity of the, disrup the disruption that the container or shipping container created. So when you look at the world today, is, and the way that we are looking at the use case of the uh, digital asset, because when you are talking about the blockchain, there is no way of avoiding actually the digital assets. There are different use cases around digital assets. We know Bitcoin, Ethereum. But I think the way that we looked at it is more on the institutional part. Is there any way 
that which can revolutionize today the pre-funding process of the cross-border. So rather than trapping the capitals into destination two days or three days prior and creating this cost for the economy, is there any other way with this new technology? So our use case is very simple. And it's not necessarily replacing fiat currencies like US dollar or euro. Imagine in the more difficult or exotic currencies that um, there is more and more reluctant reluctances to, to trap capital or keep uh, accounts. Is there any other way of transfer, transferring money without actually um, sending the money in advance? So that's where we get to the digital asset. In our case, it's XRP, which is our, uh, our native digital asset. Is that rather than sending money in advance, the moment that you need this money, you go and uh, on demand request for this liquidity. So basically you use the digital asset, and in this case XRP, as a bridge currency between two fiat currencies. So you are not changing the board. You are not replacing currencies today. This, this world will continue for a few years. I don't think that we can plug blockchain and change the world dramatically. So the disruption will happen progressively. I can give you a case. So for instance, you are a financial, um, you are a payment service provider. You want to send $100 to Mexico. So you go to the crypto exchange, you have your $100, you convert that to XRP, and immediately after, you convert back to the Mexican peso, and then you onward deliver to the local market. This is changing completely the way that the banking today is happening. This world is very fragmented. And as I mentioned, blockchain is not a network of the network yet. It's adding another complexity to the existing <laughs> world of the payments. Mm -hmm. So you have the network of the banks, you have the blockchain, then you have mobile money, online wallets. Can you imagine in what a fragmented world we are living? And if we don't think about what we have learned from the history of the payments, we will continue to add complexity to this world. Is there any other way of doing it? And I think that's, that's where the next generation of the techno uh, blockchain technology is leading actually to a protocol that um, is called Interledger Protocol, which is connecting any kind of the networks to other networks. So is what is a disruption that a shipping container did in order to create interoperability between the ship, train, and the trucks. So is that how we can enable the world to freely transact values by using the, the proper in, uh, protocol layer, which is the interledger, by using a digital asset that has the capacity to cope with the requirements of the instant payments and the uh, scalability uh, of, uh, of um, cross-border payments. And of course, on the top of that, I think, when you get more into the technical details, a level of the smart contracts who in reinforce the, the level of the trust between the parties. This is our perception of the Internet of Value. Thank you. <laughs> Word of the payments. Mm -hmm. So you have the network of the banks, you have the blockchain, then you have mobile money, online wallets. Can you imagine in what a fragmented world we are living? And if we don't think about what we have learned from the history of the payments, we will continue to add complexity to this world. Is there any other way of doing it? And I think that's, that's where the next generation of the techno uh, blockchain technology is leading actually to a protocol that um, is called Interledger Protocol, which is connecting any kind of the networks to other networks. So is what is a disruption that a shipping container did in order to create interoperability between the ship, train, and the trucks. So is that how we can enable the world to freely transact values by using the, the proper in, uh, protocol layer, which is the interledger, by using a digital asset that has the capacity to cope with the requirements of the instant payments and the uh, scalability uh, of, uh, of um, cross-border payments. And of course, on the top of that, I think, when you get more into the technical details, a level of the smart contracts who in reinforce the, the level of the trust between the parties. This is our perception of the Internet of Value. Thank you.